Today I'm going to be showing you inside my personal jewelry collection. This is something I've been wanting to share for a while and I've had a lot of requests for it over on my other channel, The Recycled Life. Today, I'm finally gonna share my personal vintage jewelry collection. I love all things that have fringe, whether it's pillows, whether it's blankets, or whether it's jewelry. And anything that's gonna have tassels and dangles, I'm gonna love. This beautiful black onyx and copper fringe necklace I got from a very sweet subscriber. Thank you, Susan. Your gift is so sweet and so kind. This is something that I would wear with a summer dress, but I'd also rock that with just jeans and a t-shirt. This will be cherished in my personal collection for so many years to come. This is another sweet gift from Susan, and I love Mexican silver, and this one has so much beautiful detail on it. One of the things that I love to do is mix metals, and when a piece already has mixed metals on it, I love that because then I can wear stacked brass over here and stacked silver mixed with copper over here, and you have that one piece that kind of ties it all together. Since we've been in quarantine, I've had to be a little bit more creative on how I'm finding my jewelry. I can't just go to an estate sale or a yard sale and grab it for a dollar. I've had to look online and I've gotten several pieces, including this one off of eBay. One of the tips that I would give is if you're not looking for valuable pieces, but you're looking for really cool, really unique pieces, try searching other materials other than silver and gold. Everybody knows what they're worth. If you like an artist that works with pewter or brass or copper or a combination of all of those, make sure you check out eBay because I got this baby for only $11.99. It's not artist signed, but it's very mid-century brutalist. I love the look of it. And for $11.99, you really can't beat that when you're buying something that's a vintage piece online. Speaking of pewter and not signed and an eBay score, I got this for $16.99. And this one's really fun because I'm trying to add more of the mid-century modernist kind of atomic shapes in my collection. And I love this because it does have some kind of a resin fill in the center. And that kind of ties in when I pair it with turquoise. So this is kind of a fun piece. It has a little bit of a hammered pewter look. And I really like the chain on this one. In fact, I think I'm going to wear that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks really cool with these earrings actually. I like wearing those together. So these are another eBay score that I got since I've been in quarantine. I think I've been shopping a little bit too much. It's really hard not to have that thrifting fix. And so I've been poking around on eBay every evening after dinner. But these were sterling silver little drop earrings. I think I paid $35 for these, so it was a little bit more. But I really loved how they had that modernist minimalist look. I know you probably won't believe me, but sometimes I do like to go for a minimal look. Not very often, but sometimes I do. And I thought that these would be perfect for that not a minimalist look, obviously. This is another eBay score that I just got for $12. And what I loved about this one was that it was pewter, which I'm very attracted to. I really like the look of pewter, especially when things have a little bit of that antique hammered look. And I liked that this reminded me of like an Egyptian collar necklace. It's nothing fancy and it's nothing valuable, but it's a big statement piece. And I think that this is gonna look really cool with just jeans and a t-shirt. Since I'm almost never a minimalist, one of the things that I love to do is stack bracelets all the way up my arm. And whenever I'm out shopping with my best friend, Selena, we're always looking at pawn shops for things that are going to get melted down out of the scrap. Anytime we find a sterling silver piece, especially if it's artist signed, we always grab that out of the melting pot because these things do not need to be melted down to make new jewelry. They are amazing by themselves. I try to look for pieces that have a little bit of detail and design in them so I can do a mix and match stacked look. This one's one of my favorites. This I actually got from Pacific Jewelers in Vancouver, Washington, and it's a snake. It was funny, I pulled it out and I was already planning on getting it before I even realized it was a snake. He's cute, he's one of my favorites. This was a Nebraska junk jump find. I found this on our very first day of picking in Omaha, and it's a really special piece to me because it's by a Norwegian designer. It's made out of pewter, and I had actually had a very, very similar one in the past, and I sold it a couple years ago, and I've always regretted it. I ended up liking the design on this one better than the one I sold, so that kind of made my day, and every time I wear it, I just think about how much fun that Selena and I had on that amazing trip to the junk jump. This was a gift from my sweet friend, Michelle. Many of you guys know her over on The Recycled Life. You've seen her in our jewelry repurposing episodes and our fun Halloween episode. And this one's really special to me just because I love her two pieces. So that one will be cherished forever. Thank you, Michelle. 
This one's very special. This was actually my five year anniversary gift and it's an unsigned Navajo piece, but it has the most beautiful giant chunks of turquoise in it. And I love the little bit of detailing on it. It's such a statement. I love wearing this. Every single time I ever wear this trunker, I get lots of compliments. He's very special, I'm never letting this one go either. These are some fun modernist earrings that I got off of eBay, and they have black onyx on one side, and then they have a crushed turquoise and a resin on the other. I just love the fact that they were different. I'd never seen them before, and I love that as you walk, they kind of go whoop, 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 whoop. These were an incredible score. I got these at a little thrift shop just up the street from my house and I had never come across squash blossom earrings before. That was the first time I'd ever seen them and I've actually never seen them since either. One of them had the little loop broken and I got them for $10 so I got such a steal on them that I was able to take them to a jeweler and for I think it was $15 he was able to repair the loop. You can barely tell the difference between the two of them and they're beautiful. I love the bright turquoise. It kind of pulls out the color in my eyes. These are ones you can wear with a dress but you can also dress them down again with jeans and a t-shirt. Megan at the Vault Vintage Boutique has an incredible incredible collection of vintage and antique clothes and lots of beautiful antique jewelry and she was wonderful enough to let us host our pop-up vintage market in her parking lot and I made a couple sales and the first thing that I did was go inside and see this beauty and I bought it. It's from the 1940s. It's a Turkish artist signed piece and talk about fringe. I mean this is where it's at. That's where it's at. I love this piece. This is another fun one. I got this off of eBay and it was hilarious because it was a make an offer and I made an offer and the, the girl wrote back saying that she was a fan of our show. That was really hilarious. I couldn't believe the odds of that happening. This is a beautiful liquid silver Native American piece with beautiful, beautiful pale turquoise stone and had to get it because of the fringe. It's got that Southwestern vibe that I'm really attracted to. This is a fun one that I'm hoping to wear with dresses this summer. And I think I'm gonna do a layered look. I think I'm gonna actually mix it with a shorter necklace. This one I was super disappointed about because I really, really, really have been trying hard to find more modernist pieces with turquoise in them. When I spotted this baby, I was so excited because I loved that it had that dark oxidized look on the inside surrounding the turquoise stone, very modern, very minimal, but I could also stack it with a whole bunch of other things and I think it could really pop, but it's just a little bit too small. So I'm gonna have to put this in our May sale. So if you have a very small risk, I'm so jealous of you and you can snag this baby in our upcoming May sale. I got a thing for snakes and this one's really cool because it's a double headed snake. I had so much fun researching this ring. This is where I really started to learn what all of the stamps and all of the codes mean. And I was able to look at the tiny little stamps here. There's, you know, let's see, four or five different letters. There's 925, there's a couple symbols and there's a circle around it. And I was able to decode that this was made between 1942 and 1965 in Naples, Italy, which I just thought was so cool. It's actually got the silversmith's numbers on there. So if I ever was able to go over there and do some more research, I might be able to find out exactly who made this. This is another find I recently got from Pacific Jewelers, and it's fun because it's got that pale turquoise, but it's got a very modernist look to it. This is a nice, chunky, heavy silver piece from Mexico. I was planning on keeping this one forever, but I think I'm going to let go of this one. I love it. I don't know, should I let it go? This might be one I have seller's regret because it's got that kind of brutalist look around the outside mixed with the turquoise. Okay, I think I'm gonna rethink it. Maybe I'd like it better if I put it on a solid collar necklace, like a sterling silver one. I don't know. Okay, well let me know in the comments below if you really want this piece. If someone out there really, really loves it, I think I'll put it in the May sale. Otherwise, I might keep it, I don't know. I got this at an estate sale for just a few dollars last year, and it's a pencil. Like, how cool is that? It's just a little mid-century tiger, and you twist this little head, oh no you don't, you twist this right here, and the pencil comes out. And that's kind of fun, you know? So I put him on a little sterling silver chain and I've only worn him a few times, but I think it's kind of fun when I go out with Selena and I'm like, oh, we forgot to do this, let's write a note. <laughs> Cause you never know when you're gonna need to write a note. And if you've got this around your neck, you don't have to worry about it. Let's talk rings for a minute here. This is one of my favorite rings I've ever gotten. I love white turquoise. It's super hard to find in antique pieces. This is actually a modern Navajo piece. 
and it's just so beautiful. I love that it's a statement ring, but it's still neutral colored. I love to get antique pieces and vintage pieces, but I will say one thing that's really nice about this one is it actually isn't incredibly heavy compared to this chunker right here. I got this in Nebraska and we pulled this out of a scrap pile in the pawn shop. I love, love, love this one. It's very old. It's got these beautiful stones in it, but it's very heavy. And as my finger kind of swells up from the heat throughout the day, it can get really tight. This one, on the other hand, is just very lightweight and it's really molded to fit your finger good. This is my favorite new ring. I got this at a pawn shop right before things got crazy. He's just so cool. He's kind of snarling just a little bit, but for the most part, he looks like a pretty friendly little wolf. I'm always drawn to animals. I have a huge lion collection. In fact, let's take a look at my belt buckles real quick. Almost every single one of my belt buckles just happens to be some kind of a big cat. This one's really neat. It's actually a Leo symbol and it's from the 1970s. I think this one's really cool because he looks like he's very medieval. And then I got my giant door knocker one. I still haven't worn this out in public because Selena made me so scared that some creep was going to come up and start knocking on my door down there. <laughs> so inappropriate. I'm sorry. It's very Game of Thrones with the lions on the side. It's a bit heavy, so I also think I'm a little afraid that it's going to fall off and land on my toe, like if I'm wearing sandals or something. This could do some damage. My sweet friend Michelle also gave me this little road runner as a gift. He's so cute. He's got two little turquoise bits in him. And I wasn't sure what to do with him because he was a pin and I don't use pins very often in my clothes or in my fashion. And I had this double-sided wallet that I got at Goodwill to take on the Nebraska Junk John. When we were out picking, we had our own personal shopping money and then we also had our Recycled Life jewelry money. And so this worked out great to be able to put it on my wallet. And then I always knew that the Roadrunner side was my personal funds and then the other side was the Recycled Life funds. These little Thunderbirds were also another eBay score. And I love these little guys because they're really, really lightweight, but they're a nice statement. I almost forgot to talk about this. This is another forever piece. I'm never letting this go. It is incredible. It's one of a kind. I've never seen anything like it. It is actually hand painted ceramic. It looks like it's a giant piece of turquoise mixed with silver, but it's all hand painted. I scored this on eBay and I'm never, ever, 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 ever letting this go. Welcome to another quarantine episode. As you can see, I'm here holed up into my bedroom with my kitties. My husband's been on conference Zoom calls all day. So I set up a little makeshift desk and today I'm going to show you some of the amazing jewelry pieces that Selena and I have picked up over the last year, year and a half that need a little bit of work. And I'm gonna do a little bit of redesigning and see what I can come up with. And I'm giving myself a limit of only making three items because otherwise I have a feeling I'm gonna be here all day. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is making a necklace out of single earrings. This is one of the things that we come across the most when we're out at pawn shops. And I probably have 30 or 40 of them. So I'm gonna see if I can make some kind of a cool charm necklace where I can mix and match and just see if I can make it work. What I've done so far is I've pulled out all of these single earrings. This is not even close to all of them, you guys. We have so much stuff. I think we've officially become hoarders, but you just don't know it because it's jewelry and we can shove it all in a box. I've pulled out some really pretty old silver chains and I've also got a lot of little bits and pieces that I feel like I can somehow rework into the stuff. Who am I kidding? <laughs> as soon as I started pulling this stuff out, I got really inspired and I do think I'm gonna be spending all day on this. I think that I have settled on my designs. I'm going to take all of these single earrings. There's one, two, three, four separate single earrings that I'm going to create into one necklace. I've already started on this one. I took three single earrings and layered them and then used a bunch of little silver bits from other things. And then I'm really excited about this one here because it's got this beautiful amber. I'm gonna kind of mix that green in with it. And then the last one is going to be this little bull here. I think he was originally a necklace and had something hanging from him, but we found him just like this. And I'm going to take this silver fringe from another earring and see if I can get that attached there. And then this beautiful earring. I wish we had the second one to that because it's a really nice one. 
and I'm going to use that as the little teardrop. I have come up with at least four or five different things I want to do. We have this beautiful Navajo nausea that went to a squash blossom necklace that had plastic beads. So we removed those. I think it's going to look beautiful with this malachite and silver beaded piece right here. So I think I'm going to rework that. Then over here, I found this long chain that I think looks really great with this piece. And it has a little area that I can maybe hang something off of. I really love tassels. So I'm going to see what I can make out of those two pieces. This beautiful piece right here, I love everything on it, but I wanna update the rhinestones with something a little bit different. So I'm gonna keep digging and see what I can find to possibly swap out there. This is an old shoe clip and it's sterling silver. And I thought that this is gonna make a really great necklace because I can actually hang other pieces off of those bottom little loops right there. So I'm gonna make that into something. I wonder if this piece was originally a belt buckle. It's about the right size and shape for it. And it looks like there used to be some stuff welded onto there. But I'm going to turn that into an amazing big necklace. That is going with this. Look at that big chunky chain. That's gonna be amazing. I'm on a mission to turn this into a really long necklace. I really love this chunky. I think this was a bracelet. Looks like about the right size. I love this chunky chain with all that detail on it. I think that's gonna look great with this brass. And then I think I'm going to possibly dismantle this necklace. I'm not loving these kind of brutalist chunky pieces here. But I really like the contrast with the black and the copper and brass all tied in together. I'm digging that vibe. So I think I'm gonna work some magic on this baby next. sterling silver and malachite necklace worked perfect with this vintage nausea. I love that when you really look close, you can see that there's some deep green in here. And I feel like pairing it with that malachite kind of pulls out the more green tones out of that turquoise. Super happy with how this turned out. This one's going to be up for grabs soon. This one is probably going to be one of my favorites because I'm going to mix this beautiful blue green turquoise with a mid-century brutalist sterling silver piece. And then I can't believe how many necklaces I have gotten out of this beautiful sterling silver chain. This one was saved from the melting pot. And when I grabbed it, I knew it was going to be expensive because it weighed a lot, but it was so worth it because I think I've already gotten four or five necklaces out of just that one really long chain. One thing that I'm always grabbing out of the melting pot are these beautiful sterling silver feathers. A lot of times they come off of earrings, like single earrings like this, where maybe someone tossed it away because it was missing one. And sometimes I find them just by themselves. But I think that this piece that I've stacked the three on needs something to separate between the chain and this little section I've created here. And I think that because I ended up going with the bird on top, I think the feathers would look really good. These are the two I think I'm gonna go with. They're not identical and they're not exactly the same length, but they are so close. So what I'm thinking of doing is putting one there and then one here, and there'll be maybe another bead or something in between that. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. This guy is all finished. I love the fact that this one is all silver and there's no color or stones on it, but that everything's got a lot of detail and texture. And I, I thought it was pretty neat that these little bars ended up working to separate that area. And then this was from something that had just maybe four or five of these pieced together, but the rest of it was missing. And then I used this little tiny like triangle mesh area to kind of drop that down. And then these are three separate earrings. So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five separate earrings. Actually, this was from an earring too. So six different earrings plus a bracelet part and a broken necklace part. 
I am so proud of myself right now. I think I've actually figured out how to get this to lay perfectly and I was able to use other beads from other necklaces that were broken as spacers. So this is gonna be pretty neat. I added on this little guy in the middle here and I'm just right now creating this section to all be one piece and loop together. And then I have a chain that I'm gonna to add to those loops that's a little bit smaller that will be the rest of the necklace and it's basically split in half right now. I can't wait to see how this one turns out. One thing that always happens with me when I'm working on these kinds of creative projects is everything changes in a minute. I just found this single earring right here that's sterling silver and I decided to completely rethink this green and amber colored one. So I'm going to attach that down there and then I'm going to take this single earring and actually lay it over the top and attach it there so it kind of dangles and then have the green pieces on the sides. And it's possible I may eliminate the green pieces altogether because now I feel like that's just a beautiful drop necklace by itself. So always be open to changing your mind. a very proud moment here look at this these spacers worked out perfectly this is a separate earring I took about half of it apart added in this single earring pendant put some silver put some silver spacers right there and then I just popped all that on this little longhorn here and it has two little loops right there so I'm going to put that on a thin sterling silver chain and I love the fact that these spacers ended up working out perfectly so that this wouldn't go too close and there'd be enough room for that pendant to kind of just hang there in the middle. So cute. Look at how this one turned out. I can't believe I was able to do it. I ended up using five different earrings. One there, two, three, four for the little dangle that I added in last minute, and then five for that one. And these ended up being almost the exact same length and I was able to do very symmetrical on the rest of the beads that were just from other junk necklaces. So this beauty is going to be up for grabs in our May sale, so stay tuned. Okay, I've tried a few different things with this beautiful necklace here that I had taken the rhinestones off of. And originally I was gonna put the one shoe clip on it and hang some stuff from the shoe clip. But I really wanna stick to this era for this necklace and I feel like I don't wanna add in any turquoise and I'm not loving how the shoe clip turned out. I'm going to save this necklace until I can get a beautiful brooch, probably something that can tie in some more of the blue color and this will just have to wait. If you're looking for antique and vintage jewelry during this quarantine time, we've got our amazing monthly sale, so don't forget about that over at therecycledlife.com. And all the pieces that you saw me make today are gonna be up for sale in the next sale, which is going to be in May. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the pieces that I created and what you think of my personal collection. Thank you so much for joining me today. So used to saying joining us, this is weird. I'm gonna have to get used to this. I'm already hard at work on a couple more fun videos, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know as soon as I drop the next video. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Mm -hmm.